Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Frenzy Extra. A little bit new look this year. I'm Andy Lacombe, joined alongside by Kevin Shea and Worcester Telegram Gazette sports editor, Home Team Magazine's Jim Wilson. These two guys are get used to talking throughout this Frenzy Extra the last couple of years. Now we're going to give them a little bit more time to talk. It is just what you, the viewer at home, wants. We're going to start with a little bit of a debate that I think is going around in central Massachusetts, and it's teams are getting smaller. Programs are getting smaller. Is participation in football, it is declining, at least it seems that way. The question is, what is the future like if we keep seeing teams get smaller and smaller. Yeah, Willie, you go You're the guest. I'm out. the guest. I'm, I'm just, the, the Poochie's money's paying off. we got the new set. <laughs> We're getting, this is great. So I, I, I got a chair I can fit in. It's fantastic. <laughs> that is awesome. I can't wait for this year's Frenzy Extra. We're getting rings and necklaces oh, next week. Turnover yeah. chains. Yeah. Turnover chains for everybody. That's exactly right. Well, so, like but, but participation, I mean, I think that, that's the problem. I think it's, it, you hear about the NFL, the numbers going down. It's going down everywhere. Uh, you know, there's a new generation of parents this year. So it's like, what do you want your kids to do? Do you want to play football? And everybody's scared of concussions. And, you know, what I think a big thing is, above all else, there's more options. I mean, when we were growing up, I mean, my, I grew up in Northboro. We didn't have Pop Warner. I had to go to Marlboro. I played Pop Warner over there for years until I went to the high school that you played freshman football. And now, now I think you have between, if, you, if it's not football, it's lacrosse, it's travel baseball, it's soccer. My kids are playing uh, you know, flex football for the Worcester Cowboys, which my, my son's playing. You know, so he's getting into it. But other than that, I mean, there's more options for the kids this year. So I think when parents look at well, what's safer for their kids, maybe football's not their first, first reaction. Yeah, the problem is, and the, what I see is that other than the top two divisions, you have division uh, three and four, the next four divisions, Every team, with few exceptions, BVT and Leicester and Northbridge have good numbers, but everyone else is in the 20s or low 30s. So how do you maintain a program? How do you have a freshman team? How do you have a JV team and a varsity team? If you don't have those three programs, you're in trouble because freshmen shouldn't play varsity with very, very few exceptions. Once every five, 10 years, you get a freshman who's physically and emotionally mature enough to play varsity football. Other than that, Freshmen should be by themselves. I had a trainer tell me of a, of a top Division three school, said, look, at, we think these freshmen are, are there. Emotionally, they're not. These kids, half of them go home and watch Teletubbies. Like, they're not emotionally equipped and mature enough to play against seniors and juniors, and you're going to crush them, and you're going to lose five or six kids every year if you don't have a freshman program. And, Willie, you and I talked about this. Every coach will tell you, freshman year, they'll look at their team, and they'll say, pick five kids and say, those kids have no shot. Right. They'll never play for me. And you know what? The kid falls in love with the weight room. The kid grows. The kid matures. And lo and behold, those five or six kids are starting for him as seniors on the varsity, maybe the leaders on that team. If you don't have that, if you don't have a JV team for your sophomores to play on, you know, if nothing else, it's the carrot one day a week you get to play against kids your own size. Because you get beat on in practice every other week because you're playing against the varsity. But one day a week you get to play JV against kids your age and your size. Without that... How do you do it? How do you maintain a team in a program when you have 20 kids, 30 kids, and everyone has to play? If you don't play in the varsity, that's it. Now you practice for five more days well, with what, seniors and juniors. When should tackle football begin? You said flex football. Uh, maybe you can explain that for a second. But there's, you know, Millbury High School, take that. They're a small school. They used to be a co-op right. program with Sutton. There's about 25, 30 kids in the program, 17 are juniors. So outside of that class, they don't really have a team that can that could feel enough kids to feel the football team. What they do to try to get kids into football in Millbury and Sutton is they do a flag football well through elementary school. They don't want you. They don't want them hitting and into the pop warners necessarily. You get into that and then they can teach them the right way to do the hitting, the right way to tackle things like right. that. Exactly. When should when I mean should should that begin in high school or middle school? Or should it be early? That's because my son's eight years old. He's playing flex football, which is basically flag football. Okay. But they have like a soft helmet and a soft shoulder pads on. But he's on Team Butterfly Chaser. He's not. He's not. I'm not putting him on a super <laughs> team anytime soon. I love him to death. <laughs> but I mean, but I think he has kids that you know the, that age. They're real kids. You look at the kids. I, I, he was on a team last year at the Cowboys. The kid was playing coming early to play with kids two years older than him because he was just that good. You knew he was to be the guy that was the, the benchmark for that. That would be a one good player. You know, like, you know, you're talking about him six years from now, saying, I watched that kid play this. Right. But, I mean, they're not, they're not doing contact. They're not doing anything. They're learning the, the basics, the fundamentals. And it's basically just, you know, get, they snap it, they run a sweep around the end, and everybody just runs to that guy. And maybe right. he makes a couple cuts and he's gone. But, I mean, they're, they're, not, they're learning the game early. It's more of a fostering a love for the game. Is this something they want to do 
when they get older and you want to keep them on. Then they, they, don't, they don't get into pads in a couple of years. Then they'll start hitting kids. There'll be weight, weight limits in each league and things like that. And that's when it gets into a more substantial right. area. But like you said, does, well, it's, yeah. what, how many towns have that kind of thing? Well, the football is the one sport where you can, you can just start as a freshman. You can never play football beforehand, unlike any other sport. And you can come out as a freshman and you can learn. And you'll be behind for a couple of weeks or maybe a month, but you catch up quickly. Right. And so I would say whenever the kids want to play tackle football, like I, if it was up to me, I would say play flag until you get to high school or maybe 7th right. and 8th grade. If the kid wants to play in 7th and 8th grade tackle, then go play tackle. But there's no reason a third grader or a second grader, to me, should be playing tackle football with all the pads on and starting in July or the first week of August and going through November because your, your season's longer than a Division One college. All you're going to do is turn those kids off to the sport. But in terms of when, they can start whenever. Yeah. But you get numbers like, I mean, Holy Name has 24 kids. Yeah. You're practicing a half line. Like they're practicing, okay, we got a left guard and a left tackle and our tight end and center. We don't have anyone on the right because we need to get a good look from our scout well, guys. Comes down so to. now here's our best three remaining linemen on the left side. How do you even run a that's program like that? That's what we're talking about these smaller teams. And they're forced. To, they're using tackling dummies and garbage bags turned over right. to, to, to run a scout team. And they have the assistant coach who used to play three years ago at Anna Maria. He's out there running the, the, look, the look quarterback. Right. How much of a look are you getting? You're playing a double wing team this weekend. How many, how many good looks are you getting as a true double wing? You're not getting, it's, it's almost a waste of time for these guys to go in there and try to play when they're playing against freshmen and sophomores who don't, who don't really have a concept of what they're doing. Right. They're not getting a good look. And you go, like you said, you said earlier about how that we actually have a freshman that can play. But after three or four weeks of playing, what about a Division one, Division three guy who's stuck? We we'll get St. John's this week, yeah. Wachusett next week, Lemison the next week. We said all every year we say about you know when Auburn had that wagon team, people are saying, well they should be playing these guys because they you know they should be playing the Wachusetts. They should be playing. The, that's fine. They'll play good for one week, but then they got to play next week with losing three guys right. in the starting mm -hmm. line, and they're playing that 150 pound sophomore at tackle now because their 350 pound road grader got hurt. That's when you start seeing these get the, the, the depth really, really But why, right. why is participation down? Safety? Safety concerns? Yeah, I think, it's, it's, I think it's a ton yeah. of things. But I think it's not just safety. I think it's what Willie said. It's fall baseball. It's, it's year-round. Right. Yeah, year-round every there's sport. Every, there's so many more options now for kids. It's the, not just play one season and then go to the next sport. The safety thing, though, is it, isn't it not safer to play football now than, say, when you two guys oh, much. were yeah. playing it? I yeah, it's, it's much safer now. Right? I mean, with the new trainers, tackling styles, trainers, the trainers, tackling the helmet style. technology. Yeah. They're I mean, worried about you know concussion protocol oh, God, and things yeah. like that. If, if you... You, you know, we all play with the kids who get their lights knocked out, you know, and you know it. They get their bell rung three, and they're still in a cachet still this day. Yeah. It's just <laughs> it's a, walking, yeah. it's a walking concussion. <laughs> when it comes down, it's just concussion. Yeah. No, it is much safer today. Yeah. But I right. think that what you're going to have to see is football is going to have to get creative. Like the yeah. high school is going to have to get creative. You know, St. Peter, Mary, and Holy Name, uh, they're probably going to have to co-op soon. Yeah. You know, Burncoat and Worcester Tech could co-op. If they co-op, now you can have a freshman JV right. and varsity team. North and South, co-op. Now you can have a freshman JV varsity team, and you can have 60, 70 kids in the program. Kids can be at the level they should be at. Which versus, also makes it safer. You're right. right. For it everybody does. It well. does make it safer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last 30 seconds here. Future football. Are we okay? We're going to be I doing think, the Frenzy Extra uh, in five I years? Think we're, no, I think we're fine. I it's, think just, we're fine. It's, a, it's a thing right now. It's in, the, it's in vogue. Talk about, we'll be talking about it in five years. How it's... You know, there's too many players. They need to, you know, they, they, they separate North and Doherty. <laughs> you know what? And the co-op of St. Peter, Mary, and Holy Name. Once they win, right, then teams. But you do that. You co-op St. Peter's and Holy Name, and now they're playing at Division Three. Now they're playing Wachusett, right. Lemonster, okay. and St. John's. All right, well, we have to cut this part of the discussion there. When we still don't have enough time. Well, we're <laughs> coming back. There's another, another element and another break coming up. Well, but we'll come back with Jim and Kevin, and we will talk about some of the surprise teams in Central Mass so far through three weeks of the regular season. Stay with us on the Frenzy Extra. Coming up this week on the Friday Night Football Frenzy, it's a big city showdown as St. Peter Marion visits Doherty. Midwatch A rivals square off as Lemonster visits Shrewsbury. It's a black and blue special when Grafton takes on Leicester. And Tantasqua makes the trek down the pike to face off against Auburn. The Frenzy on Charter TV3. The Frenzy is presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia and Bay State Savings Bank. 
Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. A serious multi-vehicle accident on Route 146 in Millbury. A suspect is arrested in connection to a fatal shooting. Police say a 20-year-old man was hit by a vehicle from behind. A Northbridge man charged with burying a dog alive. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. All right, welcome back to Friends the Extra. Andy Lacombe, Jim Wilson, Kevin Shea. Uh, after a spirited debate in, uh, in round one, we're talking top teams and we're also talking surprise teams. We'll start with the surprise teams in Central Mass through three weeks. Jim, let's, let's hear one from you. you know, I, think, I think a surprise team is, is uh, St. Bernard's coming out 3-0. Yeah. I think they're going to be a good team, but that went over Fitchburg. I thought Fitchburg would be a little bit better going into the season. I'm sure they thought they'd be a little better. There's still time for them to turn it around. But St. Bernard's opens up with a big win over, over Fitchburg in week one. Uh, for the first time in forever, I think. There was a great natural rivalry with Fitchburg teams. Uh, but I think they've been doing really well with the way they've been, they've been beating you know, Fitchburg. They put 36 points against Fitchburg, 48 points against Monty Tech, 58 against Narragansett uh, against last week. That's really impressive. They have two get, you know, Walter Morales and Xavier Marty each have five touchdowns. I think that's a you know, really impressive, impressive offense form. Tyler Thibodeau, Dom Valero lead that defense. They're going to be a team to watch down the stretch. Yeah, Fitchburg put up a lot of points against Shepard Hill. Fitchburg, no, Fitch, back and forth. I was going to say, you know, Fitchburg back, you know, had that. That's a good win. Shepard Hill came back to, to beat Fitchburg yeah. in that game. They could be easily in a different position. That's a good one. Kev, yeah. what, what's, a, what's a surprise team for you? I got Acibit, Milbury, and Marlboro. And, you know, we talked about uh, Acibit, and, and, you know, I think all of us are in agreement that, uh, thank God, that DJ Bass and Jerry McManus, finally the MIA doing the right thing and letting them play basketball. But these two guys are having a heck of a football season to lead at the Aztecs. You know, they shut out Hudson. They shut out David Prouty. Prouty's got a good offense. They shut those two teams out. They beat Milbury. Milbury's that was off to a win. great start. And, and Milbury's a team, you know, 2-0 going into that game. And you look at Greenwich, the quarterback, is a veteran. He's poised. But I look at uh, Robles. I look at uh, Mason Broyles. They're fast. I saw them in that game against BMR. Those are fast kids. They're, and they're tough. Like, they'll stick their nose in, and they'll try to run you over in addition to running around you. And then Marlboro, 3-0, two shutouts. They only give up eight points. All season long, they've given up eight points, and that was to Lemonster. They have a kicker. Lou Vigent's like the Mike Allstott of Central Mass. He's just a beast. He's a bruiser. And I say this every year, but Sean Mahoney does such a great job of tailoring his team to what he has. He doesn't try to run the same offense or the same defense every year. He tailors it to the personnel he has. 3-0, and two shutouts, and only eight points against Lemonster. That's a great start. Yeah, I'm with you on Milbury. 2-1, and one, I still think Milbury's a surprise team because, you know, there's only about 25, 30 guys there. Yeah. A lot of juniors that are really a, an excellent class and a couple of key seniors on that Milbury team. I think hanging with Astabit like they did, to right. me, was kind of a surprise. But a big win over BVT. Huge. Milbury looks pretty good. Another team for me is Northbridge. Northbridge is 3-0. and All right. You know, Northbridge is always seems to be there. But, you know, they had their, what, 7-4 and four a year a year ago, and they weren't satisfied with it. They didn't look great in the game we did early on against Quab, and it was, it was the week one game, and they've had some injuries. But the next man up philosophy there, and the quarterbacks, Duzinski, and Omar Concepcion on the, in the line, in the front line there, in offense and defense, he's a difference maker. When they beat Nitmuck, and the way they beat Nitmuck the way they did last this past week, they opened some eyes, I think. Even with guys down, a couple front-line offensive guys yeah. down, to have Zach Roberts and Cullen That's McNeil, nice. guys that can really run the, run the football and, and make plays in space. Northbridge, to me, at 3-0, and after seeing them early on, Still a surprise. I yeah. think that Nipmuc game was that was the Nipmuc game was why when yeah. I turned on, I jumped on the Northbridge bandwagon. I picked Nipmuc to win because I thought Nipmuc was a stronger team going into it. And like you said, the Quabbin game they didn't look great. They had a back and forth game with Tingsboro the week before. You weren't you weren't sure the, so the injuries was a big key. You weren't sure what Northbridge had. Zach Roberts put him on his back, and I think they had a big statement win last week yeah. against Nipmuc. Yeah. What's another one for you? You know, I, I think what we said with Milbury and Aspen, yeah. I think Aspen winning that game over Milbury. And they're going into Valley Tech this weekend. Yes, that's a big step for mm -hmm. Asabit, I think, because I think Milbury's a really good team compared to what they've had in the last couple of years. I think they've turned the corner. So they have Asabit have that what 24-22 win over yeah, over Milbury. Win. It's a big win for Asabit to show how talented they are. And then they have the Cal game 
against Valley Tech, always a tough one. You yeah. always have that Cal that comes down to like that one game at the end of the season. Oh, well, it's going to be Valley Tech versus uh, Bay Path. Or, or, you know, and, or when Monty Tech was good a couple of years ago, they had that, you know, with, how they could do against Asimut. This is going to be that game that sets the tone for the rest of the year. And Archie, you know Archie's going to have his oh, guys all fired just up. frothing all at the mouth. It's our game I mean, of the week this week just because I want, you know, how, how Archie's going to be a nutbag all week. <laughs> I'm not you know, going into the aspect game. So I the think it's going to be real good. They whacked Lester, too. Yeah. And that yeah. was, that's an eye-opener. You know what I mean? They yeah. lose to Millbury opening week. They come back. They win. Then they beat Lester, a good Lester team. That's a tough, physical Lester football team with a good quarterback, with a great – Jack O'Neill is one of the best receivers in I the area. I saw Jack O'Neill a couple athlete. weeks ago. He's a stud. And they – BVT just they physical physical football team. And that's gonna be that's when Valley Tech, especially when Valley Tech opened with an overtime loss to Millbury. Right. We got people talking about Millbury. They're from, they've really turned the corner. So I'm I'm really curious to see what comes out of this game on Saturday. It's at home against Valley Tech. Uh, how is Valley Tech gonna respond? Can they keep up the momentum? They've looked really good the last couple weeks. North Middlesex is a surprise to me. They beat Auburn 22 to nothing. Yeah. They, you know, they hung with Grafton in the first half of that game, but Grafton I think Grafton's is the next a level team. I think we're gonna talk about them yeah. in a few mm -hmm. seconds. But, uh, you know, they get a win over Groton Dunstable, but they beat Auburn 22 to nothing. That, to At me, their house. They wanted to in the, Auburn, yes. they that went changed to Auburn, things. Smacked them in the mouth. A lot of kids on that team were sophomores last year. They took a beating. New They're coach. Juniors now, yeah. new coach. North Middlesex is a surprise team for me. Yeah, especially North Middlesex with, uh, with Ruggles leaving in the offseason, sort of being, you know, sure. You know, uh, a little trap door. Oil. Little trap door. Yeah, yeah. See you later. <laughs> Old guys can't coach. See you later. So he didn't want to go. The legend nope. didn't want to no, go. No, he shouldn't. He should have no, gone no. on his own terms. That's right. that's that's for the friends of the after dark. That's, that's right. That's, we can so, discuss that. You're right. <laughs> discuss that later. I think West Boylston's a, su a surprising team we a can, little bit too. The West Boylston embargo has been lifted. We yeah. can talk about <laughs> how being <laughs> good. See, it's a little surprising. I know you're good. Three and zero. Oh. All right. right. Surprising they're that good. Yeah, they're, yeah, three zero, and and quality wins. Right. Littleton Real and good. Lester, quality. Littleton's, Littleton's always a bad opening week. Quality mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. All right, frenzy five, a new segment in, right. in the frenzy extra. Jim, Kevin, myself will unveil our top five teams in Central Massachusetts. Jim, you can, you're the guest. I'm the we'll guest. let you get yelled at first by the fans That's at home. Right. You can give us your. Frenzy up, five. Jim's email I can see, yeah, yeah, I can, I can see, because I'm the one that I do the home team poll. I'm right. the one that gets, I'm the one I always text Shay at four o'clock saying, "Give me a poll." <laughs> you know, put your it kids was down. An hour and a half. Yeah, ago. exactly. Yeah. So, and I, I, I'm seeing the last. Shrewsbury was a unanimous number one week, week one, and then Doherty beat Wachusett in a great game, and and I think a lot of people were looking at how good Doherty is. So I think they, they've been splitting votes ever since. I, I am in the, I'm, I'm old school. I think if I've had Shrewsbury, because especially once Shrewsbury. Battle with Grafton. It was a very good team, yes. and they, we beat them at the last second. A lot of people jumped ship and went to Doherty. I, I stick with you. I'm, I'm going with Shrewsbury was my number one since the beginning of the year. I'm going to stay with them until they lose. But I think Doherty's a real good team. I think Wachusett's going to be up there. Grafton, but you know Drew Campanella is probably the best quarterback in Central Mass. You know he's a four-year starter. I know St. John's has a guy. You know they they, they brought from the minor leagues and they sent him away to the minors for a little while. He's like, hey, it's it's good. You can come back and start for us now. We, the guy's an assumption. He's fine. So, but I think I think Drew he runs that offense. Jonathan White's a great great running back. I think they they have great skill position players. I think that I think they're going to be they're going to be solid number one for you. I, I'm going to follow Jim because I know Kevin's going to have a different one at the top because I have Shrewsbury at the top and Central Mass. Uh, as well and it's Campanelli and it's the guys Cam Schaefer it's the Schaefer. seniors that are back and just it's it's not just quantity it's quality in the guys that they have coming back I have Doherty as my number two I they're athletes two. Vassar Tejan Vassar and Callery the quarterback is such an impressive kid Kev called him a fifth year senior when he's only like a junior or <laughs> yeah, sophomore. A sophomore sophomore he called yeah. him a fifth year oh. senior the other day everybody's older than a Terry Wallace right you know, oh, get yeah, him on Terry, the yeah Terry can mix it up yeah. there's no question Neshoba for me and uh, uh, Grafton and I have St. John's in that top five and I probably would have, I would definitely have them now after the win over Lemonster but yeah. they played some iron I got St. John's three so I don't yeah know. I so yeah well, you're that's right it too there. I mean you, you when you look at this and it's great for us to be able to give our top five because you know people are going to clamor and say well St. John's is one and three okay a one and two but, look but okay look who they played look at CM and we got to see CM firsthand that's that Catholic Memorial team is loaded okay the Everett coach DiBiaso comes over there that team has right now on it probably four guys that are going to play division one college football next year they are a wagon they're going to win a Super Bowl in Eastern Mass this year or state Super Bowl um, you know and, and Springfield is is huge yeah. and, and that was a payback game but my top five I got Doherty I've had Doherty number one all year long so like you guys I'm staying with the team yeah. that that I had number one and it's Vassar, Forson, Callery they're just 
they're, they're very good. Every year, Sean Mulcahy says, we need a statement win. We need a win that gets us over the hump. How good are you guys? And he tells the team this. Well, they got that statement win over Wachusett. They're my number one team. Shrewsbury's number two. I mean, you can't say enough good things about Campanelli. They're not enough good superlatives. Just what a leader he is. Bringing them back from Grafton. They were like a minute and a half to go. He had to go 84 yards. He drives them down the field to win. Never a doubt in that huddle that they were going to win. Never a doubt on that sideline they were going to win. That comes down to Campanelli. He's a unique leader. Then I got St. John's third. I got Grafton fourth. I got Marlboro fifth because I just... Marlboro and a couple teams to- have told me this. Marlboro is the hardest hitting team that they play every year. That Grafton Shrewsbury game was the hardest hitting game that I've seen in person so far this year. That was awesome to watch. That was a great high school football game. Yeah, I watched Marlboro Grafton last year in the playoffs. That thing was a oh, slobber. They nonsense. just hammer so you're, each other. You're absolutely right. All right, just a few more seconds left. Jim, anything you're looking forward to this week? A couple of big games. Marlboro well, and Neshoba. No, no, it's, it's a really good rivalry week game. I mean, you have. You have the, the Shoba and Marlboro, which would be really tough. We talked about Aspen Valley Tech. I think that's going to be tough. You know, Saturday, what you get, you know, watch you say, uh, watch you St. John's. Uh, yeah. so I think that's going to be, you know, anytime you put those teams, we barely talked about watch here. That's right. right. I this think is a good show. I have watch number five them, in my book. You know what I mean? I yeah. think, I think, well, I think I mean, the Shoba and watch are four and five. I think watch even that lost to Doherty, they, they're still a phenomenal team. Oh, God, yeah. And, and guys, those are part of our big games this week coming up on the Frenzy. Wachusett St. John's is Saturday. And, of course, we have the Friday Night Football Frenzy coming your way Friday at 1025. Jim Wilson, thanks for being here. We'll see you All next right. week. It's great. I can't on wait. On the Frenzy Extra. Kevin and I are back with the college segment of Frenzy Extra right after this. Coming up this week on the Friday Night Football Frenzy, it's a big city showdown as St. Peter Marion visits Doherty. Midwatch A rivals square off as Lemonster visits Shrewsbury. It's a black and blue special when Grafton takes on Leicester. And Tantasqua makes the trek down the pike to face off against Auburn. The Frenzy on Charter TV3. The Frenzy is presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia and Bay State Savings Bank. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. A serious multi-vehicle accident on Route 146 in Millbury. A suspect is arrested in connection to a fatal shooting. Police say a 20-year-old man was hit by a vehicle from behind. A Northridge man charged with burying a dog alive. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. All right, welcome back. It's College Corner now, and we start with the College of the Holy Cross. The Crusaders are 1-3, and three, and they're getting back into the Patriot League this week, taking on Bucknell. It's been a long time since they've played a Patriot League game. Week one, they've been playing the ACC, they've been playing the Ivy League, they've been playing the Iron. Uh, so this is the second season for them. This is the season that really matters, playing Bucknell, trying to get back in the winning column. This is a huge game for Holy Cross. Yeah, and this is a Holy Cross team that's playing by the NCAA standards the second most difficult schedule based on strength of schedule in FCS football right now. Head coach Bob Chesney says he hopes his guys will build off of the losses to those very difficult teams. Day by day, we're going to continue to, to practice. Day by day, we're going to continue to test. And then again, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are crucial. Uh, uh, it's, not, it's not practice. Those got to be feel like games. And we go into games, we got to have to have that confidence that we've been there before and, uh, and, and take that next step. There. As soon as we were done on Saturday, I don't think any of us could wait to just get back together on Sunday and, and get right back at it. Because, uh, you know, if we're sitting around all day Sunday, all day Monday, it, you know, it's, you just got to get back on your bike and you got to ride. And I think that's the thing for us that uh, that enabled us to do with yesterday's practice. I think we're in great spirits, a little bit banged up, but it, I think everybody is at this stage of the game. Tried last week to throw the ball a little bit down the field early to try to get out to a fast start, and it just didn't work in our favor. I think we got to do a little bit about uh, of that this week. We have to spread the field a little bit. We, we can't be, you know, uh, offensively, we don't want to be any just one person that we're, we're concentrating on. We want to try to make sure we diversify that as much as possible. So they have to prepare for just about everything. Holy Cross and Bucknell back to the Patriot League. And we have the game for you on Charter TV 3, our coverage beginning at 1 o'clock. Over at Assumption, they don't have a quarterback controversy. They have two starting quarterbacks, two quarterbacks that are lighting it up. Mark Monks. Cody Williams, they support each other, and so far they have been crushing opponents offensively. They have been running their system very smoothly. Both 
have different strengths, both present different problems to opponents each week. We have a lot of work to do nonetheless. Um, you know, by and large, what we talk about on offense is, is, is just controlling what we can control, and that's making sure that we're assignment sound and fundamentally perfect. And if we can, if we can approach every play that we're, uh, that we call in a football game with a, a sound knowledge base and a great technique, then we have a good chance of executing. And so far, our kids have, have bought into that philosophy and have gone out and executed at a pretty high level. You know, beginning with the offensive line, moving into running back and quarterback, they're all taking care of their jobs and they're doing it at a high level, which has resulted in a lot of a lot of touchdowns. Both uh, Mark Monks and, and Cody Williams are, you know, they're experienced veteran quarterbacks. Both have played um, in varsity football games and, and understand how to play college football at a high level. So to have two kids in a program that can compete like that is a unique situation. Uh, I believe Cody and Mark have handled it like true competitors and true teammates in the sense that they uh, support each other in every endeavor. And so whether it's Mark in the game or Cody in the game, those guys go out um, and support each other and, and try to coach each other on a run. And so when it's their opportunity to get in, they expect the other guy to help them out. And by far, by, by far and away, we've been able to um, work with the two quarterback system, which is not an easy thing to do, but they've handled it like pros. Assumption taking on AIC this week and expect more from the two-headed monsters Monks and Williams at quarterback. Well, we continue with some local colleges, and that's Nichols. Nichols having a good season. Jake Wood, former Northbridge standout. You can call him Mr. Touchdown right now because he's finding the end zone with regularity. They really wanted him right out of high school to go to Nichols. He took a roundabout path, transferred in, and now Jake Wood, the former Northbridge star, the state champion, playing a big role for the Bison. I came from Stonehill College. Uh, I'm a transfer. We got a couple of transfers on the team this upcoming season, which is very exciting. Um, you know, I just didn't. Nichols College is a very good business school, so I wanted to make sure I got the best out of myself by doing sport management. Um, so that's pretty much why I made the move to come here. Coming in the upperclassmen, I mean, I know I, I feel like I have experience already. Um, you know, these guys here, they brought me right in as, as a family. Uh, that's something I could always say really not very good, too, is that, you know, they. They treated me as family right when I got here, so uh, which is good. I'm being an upperclassman, I could kind of take the leadership role uh, in the art running back position. Uh, we got a couple good running backs, myself and JJ, and a couple freshmen and sophomores as well. So uh, you know we should be pretty good in the, that position. Uh, defense, I mean defense is always strong here as well. So we got good leaders on the defense side of the ball as well. Ultimate goal is to win. Uh, I mean I know recently, uh, two years ago they had a good season here, six and four. Uh, we want to try and get back to the winning ways here at Nichols College, but uh, I mean I think we got the guys to do it. Uh, you know I. I just want to be a good contributor to the team, uh, especially on the offensive side of the ball and special teams. All right, to the alumni dean's list now. And speaking of Jake Wood, he leads us off. Two receptions, 89 yards, two touchdowns for Nichols against Alfred State this past weekend. Nicholas Ashley at Worcester State out of St. Peter Marion had 19 tackles and a forced fumble and a loss to Westfield State. On the Westfield State side, Zach Howard out of David Prouty had eight tackles and a 51-yard interception return for a touchdown in that win over the Lancers. Trinity had a big week, so did Northbridge. Kobe Schofer making the list. 10 receptions, 187 yards, three touchdowns against Bates. Eric Sachis out of Trinity, out of Worcester Academy, the Holden or Jefferson guy. Eight for eight on extra points, including a 50-yard field goal, set a school record against Bates, and he was the NESCAC player, special teams player of the week. And then Cole McCoubrey out of West Boylston at UMass had seven tackles and a tackle for a loss in a win over Charlotte. Well, that brings us to the end of uh, our first Frenzy Extra of the week, our Kev. maiden voyage. The maiden good. voyage on this new set, this new look. Look at this. We're our, putting it to good use. Our thanks to Jim Wilson for being a part of it. We'll see you next week, but first we will see you Friday night on The Frenzy. Thanks for watching, everybody.